In Leviticus 26, we're given a detailed description of the covenantal relationship that God established with Israel, something that we would call the Old Covenant. Now, the Old Covenant was based on obedience and disobedience, blessing and cursing. In verse 3, Moses records the Lord saying, If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you. Verse 4, God says he'll give them a sense of security in their land with blessed seasons of rain and crops. Verse 6, he says he'll send them peace from their enemies. Verse 9, he says that he'll bless their families with growth and with freedom. But look at what it says in the beginning of verse 14. However, if you do not listen to me or obey all these commands, and if you break my covenant by rejecting my decrees, treating my regulations with contempt, and refusing to obey my commands, I will punish you. You see, the old covenant was based on obedience and disobedience, upon blessing and cursing. Now today, we recognize the reality of cause and effect, that oftentimes good choices can lead to good results and bad choices, well, they can lead to undesired consequences. Now, although this is a truism and generally the reality, and some even might quote from the New Testament and say that we're kind of under that same kind of spiritual karma today, maybe quoting from Galatians 6 where Paul writes, don't be deceived, God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. But you see, in context, Paul wasn't promoting a principle of spiritual karma, that promise that we will always prosper when we do good or will always suffer when we do bad. I mean, if that were the case, if that were an absolute, we would all be in big trouble. But the reality, Paul was simply saying that we may fool ourselves by expecting much when we sow just a little, but we can't fool God. And the result of our poor sowing, well, that'll be evident. But see, here's the beautiful truth of the gospel, especially in light of this chapter in Leviticus. Jesus received the curse of our disobedience by dying on the cross and made a way for us to experience the blessing of his obedience by rising again. You see, under the new covenant, we are blessed not because of our obedience, but we are in Christ Jesus. And because of that, there is no more curse from God on us because the curse was born by Jesus. See, listen, the good news for us today is that because of who Jesus is, because of what he's done, we're made right in God's sight. And we have this ability, this blessing, to walk in God's goodness, his grace, and his care.